Well, are the things we're seeing happen right now pointing to the last days? Lance Wallnow, Russell Johnson, and Lee Cummings join me to talk about current events, where the church is today, and how it all connects to the end times. If you're enjoying Table Talk, be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Remember to click that notification bell to stay up to date on all of our latest posts. Are we actually in a recession? Economic pessimism, it is still very much there. The Supreme Court decided to overturn the abortion. And this landmark ruling making same-sex legal. Cities in America on edge as violence erupts among protesters. The latest sign that we may be headed for Protesters a recession. Protesters for racial justice continue. The fight against climate change. Unleashing a so Twitter barrage. They think they are falling behind. Well, every day we see headlines of war, natural disaster, acts of terror, and more. And as our world struggles to find hope, could these difficult days have a deeper significance than we realize? Well, today, with the help of our special guests, we'll explore this very important question. But first, joining me around the table is Pastor Lee Cummings. How are you doing? I'm doing so good, Joni. Thank it's you. An, it's important that people understand the Bible has a lot to say about the times that we're living in right it now. Does. Yeah, it has a lot to say about what's going on in the world right now. Yeah. It also has a lot to say about what's going on in the hearts of the people in response to what's going on yes. as well. We're going to get into that. Pastor Russell Johnson, are you ready? I'm ready. To delve into Revelation and I mean, it's a very interesting book, maybe a hard book for some people to understand. Yes, ma'am. No, I'm excited to be here. And I think especially in historical times like this, uh, the Bible becomes more important to us than it ever has before. And you recognize that it's God's love letter to humanity that helps us have peace in the midst of troubling times. Yes, for sure. Rachel Ann Brown, you, you love these discussions with these men listen, of God. I love these discussions. <laughs> There's a lot to talk about. There's a lot to unpack. And I've got lots of questions. So we'll okay. see if I get one in or not. You're going to get a question <laughs> in. You'll get a question in. I don't know. They're so good. I could just listen to all of them know, talk for sure. So Cindy Murdoch, how are you? I'm doing really good. And good. I'm excited about this because I believe it's going to help people have some sense of direction of where we are right now, according to the scripture and what's happening in the world today. Okay, Lance Wanell, welcome back to the table. It's always good to have you. I'd love to be here. It's like uh, <laughs> being at home. And it's like I, coming home. I'm telling you, I want to just want to say, of all the major religions in the world, Christianity is the one religion that has the most to say about the future. Mm. And the Bible's being proved scarily accurate it with the events that are accurate. happening right now. Oh, we want to talk about yeah. that for sure. Well, our current headlines pointing to the last days, and are we seeing end time prophecies unfolding before our very eyes? Well, today we're looking at what we see going on in the world, how the church should respond, and how it could be pointing to the return of Jesus. So I'm going to start with you, Pastor Lee. Um, for those who are watching that maybe don't understand the sequence of events that we as the body of Christ are looking for, watching for. And when we talk about these, I just want to say, we're not um, talking about them because we want to escape or we want to get out of here. I mean, we're going to occupy until he comes. Yes, that's right. And uh, we're going to do as much as we can to reach as many people, including you today, <laughs> uh, to make sure that you're ready to meet the Lord. But kind of take us through what are we looking for and what does the Bible say about where we're living right now and what's happening? I mean, it, it really is exciting. It is exciting. And, you know, what's interesting is there are so many people right now who are asking the question, is this the end of the world? You know, it's almost this idea, are things spinning out of control? And the good news that the Bible presents to us, just like Lance just said, is that there's 150 chapters in the Bible that talk about the days in which we're living in. Mm -hmm. uh, nothing is outside of God's control. That's the good news. Yeah. That Yeah, there are things that Jesus told his disciples and he told us in Matthew 24 and Luke 21 and other places about these are the things that are going to take place at the end of this present age that lead into the age to come when Jesus returns. But, you know, don't be shaken in your heart. He, he talks about the different signs. His disciples asked him a lot like we're asking, you know, how are we going to know when you're going to come back? He says, here's what you're going to see. You're going to see nations rising up against nation, kingdoms against kingdoms, signs in the sun, the moon, the stars, and the atmosphere. You're going to see it even impact nature. All of these things are like birth pangs. Mm -hmm. And just like a woman who's about ready to have a child, 
uh, you know, those contractions get more intense and closer together. And that's what we're seeing right now in the world. We're seeing those birth pangs get more intense and get closer together, but they're leading to something. And that's where the good news is, is that they're leading to the return of the king and the coming of the kingdom. And that's where we find our hope today. Yeah, so the rapture of the church, the second coming, are those two separate events? I believe they're one and the same. I believe that uh, when Jesus returns, we're going to meet him in the air, be transformed, changed. There's going to be a resurrection, and we return to the earth to reign and rule with Jesus. I don't think they're two separate uh, events, but... As I say to uh, several of my friends you who are pre-trib, wrong. I'm like, hey, if I'm wrong, uh, I'm going in the first load. So I'm not going to argue. I'm not going to pull out my prophecy that. chart to Jesus and say, Means you can't you're come back yet. Yes. Uh, yeah. I'll go in the first load. You know, Absolutely. and that's something we, we really shouldn't argue about. We should be ready whenever he comes. Yes. That's right. Whether there is a rapture or not. Personally, I do believe in a rapture. and But it's not something that we need to argue about because the things that we need to be uh, concerned about yeah. is the cross. Yes. And what Jesus did That's in right. forgiving our sins. And we just need to be yeah. ready. I mean, yeah. even if it is, even if it is before the tribulation, it's the pre-trib rapture, it's, uh, we still need to be ready because it doesn't mean things are going to get easier. Yeah. Right. Today is as easy as it's ever going to be it's before true. we see Jesus face to face. Pastor Russell, give us a little eschatology <laughs> lay out there from your perspective. Yeah, no, I think it's interesting. Even the disciples are asking this question of Jesus prior to his ascension after his resurrection. And they say, is now the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel and help us understand the timeline and the date and the season. And he says, uh, that information has been given to no man that only the father knows. Only the father. But when the father says it's time, it's time. And I think right now uh, what we are in is an age of grace where uh, I believe that uh, Christ in many ways uh, so desperately wants to return uh, and uh, celebrate with his bride. But it's the grace of God that is giving people still yet another opportunity to put their faith in Christ Jesus before that day. The Bible talks about the coming of the Lord as both a, a great day and a terrible day. It's great for those who have put their faith in Christ, but Jesus talking about that season says it will be like the days of Noah, where when it began to rain, it was too late to try to buy a admission ticket to the the ark. The door was shut. You got to choose this day whom you will serve. And, you know, for me, one of the profound truths of, of, of Christianity is that we can trust our unknown future to the one who holds it, mm-hmm. the one who was there in the beginning, will be there at the end, and has been faithful every step of the way. Only a God as good as the one that Scripture tells us about can be trusted with the unknown details, the fears, the dreams, the desires of our life. And I I think with the things that are happening in the world around us, it really is speaking to the conscience of people who have maybe been far from God, or maybe they were close with God at one point, but they're far from Him today that this is a really good time to get serious about putting your faith in Christ. I wonder if you just look in the camera and talk to someone right now that you don't really know what would happen if you died right now. And uh, you're watching, you're interested. And I just really think that the Lord is knocking on your heart's door today because he wants you to come come home. Literally, there is a space inside of you that's empty And uh, Pastor Russell, would you just take a moment and and lead them in a prayer for us? Yeah, and maybe you're watching uh, this broadcast and maybe you're not even really sure how you landed on this channel, but we don't believe in coincidence or accidents, but instead that God, by his divine prerogative, aligns the seasons of our lives and brings us into moments of decision. Not every moment is created equal, but scripture says, if you would hear him knocking on the door of your heart, do not harden your heart, but instead invite him in. The reality is, is that the Bible says no man comes to the Father except by the Son. It's not a wide road. It's a narrow road with a door. And that door has a name, and his name is Jesus, the one who was born under the law to redeem those who are under the law, who lived a perfect and sinless life, yet the one who became sin for you and for me. If you're watching this broadcast today and you're not sure where you would spend eternity if your life were to end tomorrow or if Christ were to return next week, Today would be a great opportunity to pray a simple prayer and put faith in Christ Jesus. I think sometimes we make it more complicated than it needs to be. The reality is that eternal life with Jesus is not more than just one contrite prayer away, similar to the thief on the cross who says, today 
I'm putting faith. Today, I want to be with you in paradise. And Jesus responds to him, in fact, you will. And if today you would recognize that there's things in your heart, sin, stuff that has separated you from God, but you want to put faith in Christ Jesus, receive forgiveness of your sin, have your shame and your sin be washed away by his precious blood. You could just say, dear Jesus, I, I want to invite you into my heart. I, I, I need forgiveness for my, I've tried my own way. I've tried to make it right in my own life and it just hasn't worked. But today I'm putting faith in your finished work and I'm asking you not just to be my savior, but to be my Lord. Command my destiny and I commit from this day forward to walk with you. If you would just say that prayer in your own language and in a simple way, today Jesus would take residence in your heart and you would have a guarantee of eternal life with him. It'll be the best decision you ever make. Yes. Today, he will take residence mm -hmm. in your heart yes. today, and you will never be the same. We've all experienced what he's talking about here at the table, and there is a peace that passes all understanding that only he can give, and you need that right now. Try everything else. Pray that prayer and invite Jesus in. Mm. I'm telling you, it will be the greatest decision that you've ever made. So Lance, what are some of the signs of the time that we're seeing? Talk about those if you would. I was looking where Jesus said to the disciples, and when these things begin to happen, look up for your redemption draweth nigh. And I felt the Spirit of God saying, why don't you look into that, draweth nigh? Mm. Is that drawing nigh in a calendar or is that drawing nigh in physical proximity? So I looked it up and to my shock, the verse is used in the Greek of Jesus drawing nigh unto a city. He is physically getting closer every day. The kingdom of heaven is pressing down on Satan's hierarchy. The reason why the powers of the heavens are shaken is because the glory of God is squeezing Satan out of his position and he's being pushed down. That's how the rabbis, like Paul knew in the last days, men should be more wicked, they should be doing this. He's looking at how the demonic realm is being pushed out and the kingdom is closer than ever before. And because of that, fallen humanity is feeling a greater impulsiveness of evil and those that are responding to God are getting stronger and stronger and the light and the dark is actually separating itself like tares and wheat and Jesus is physically coming to a theater near you. So let's talk a little bit about mm -hmm. some of the things we hear in, in, in the Bible, the marriage supper of the lamb, the mm -hmm. seven year tribulation period, right. the second coming of Jesus, right. um, the, the new Jerusalem, um, talk, talk about some of those things that people don't understand. Yeah, well, these, these, are, these are powerful and beautiful mysteries, which is why, you know, uh, Pastor Lee, I, I, I've grown up with both the second coming as, and the rapture as a single act. Uh, but I have to say that I've found the blessed hope isn't enduring to the end. The blessed hope is I don't have to be here for the end. <laughs> so as a Jew, I'm looking for my ticket out of, out of chaos. Uh, and, and the promise of, of the, uh, and the story that is told in the Bible about the, the bridegroom, the, the, the voice of the bridegroom shouting and coming to take the bride, there's a lot in the Bible that suggests that there is a deliverance for those who are waiting and watching. The church in Philadelphia that has a little strength is told, I will keep you from the hour. And so I look at some of those promises and I say, Lord, I want to bring as many souls as possible to heaven. I want to run the race you've given me to run. Yeah. But I also know that there's an hour coming upon the earth that you warned us is very dark. And I believe that if I'm watching, if I'm ready, that you will keep me from that hour. So I personally believe that the last days is an incentivization, if you will, to prepare yourself. It increases my focus on heaven and it increases my conscientiousness about getting the job done. I have no patience with Christians that are, that are, that are withdrawing from the world in order to go to heaven. To me, mm. That might be the, the best way not to qualify. Yeah. The right way to qualify is to be about your father's business. Yeah. And so I'm going deeper into the world every day. Yeah, and of course, the, the Bible talks about the seven years of tribulation as the wrath of the Lamb. I mean, you, yeah. you were talking, Pastor Russell, about grace. Mm. There will be none mm -hmm. during that seven years of tribulation. And so, um, but again, the important part in all of that is to be ready. Mm -hmm. But the Bible does tell us, Pastor Lee, about wars and rumors of wars. It talks about the goat and the sheep being yep. separated. We, we're seeing all of that. I mean, we've always had that, but I think we've had more uh, Christians persecuted today than 
in any time in history. Oh, and a lot of people don't believe, don't understand that or know yeah. that fact. But yeah. Christians, there are more martyrs today mm -hmm. than there have been at any other period of time in human history and more intense persecution. It's just coming to our shores now. We're just beginning to experience the pressure. Because we've been very spoiled in America. Yeah, yeah we've, well, we've yeah. lived really under, in, in a culture that has, it's like two railroad tracks. We run parallel with the Judeo-Christian worldview. Mm -hmm. uh, even if everything about our culture was not necessarily, quote, Christian, it was highly influenced by that. But now we're beginning to see the divergence where culture is going one way and truth is consistently moving forward. And you're seeing people in the church even being shaken and saying, well, I, I don't want to experience the pressure, so I'm going to... I'm going to adjust scripture, and uh, we might call that deconstruction or progressive theology or liberal theology, but really at the essence is we, we don't want to be different than the world. What I find interesting about what Jesus taught about the end times, especially like in Mark 13, is when he's laying out all of these things that are going to happen, and they're, they're crazy, they're incredible things, and many of them we're beginning to see happen. What he's more interested in is not the external signs as much as the internal preparation of the heart of his disciples, mm -hmm. he said. When you see these things happen, he says men's hearts are going to fail them for what they see coming on the face of the earth. Don't let your love grow cold. Mm -hmm. Don't get swept up in the delusion of the age. He says, take heed, watch, and pray. Right. This is Jesus' response. He, the ESV says, stay awake. And I think there's a real need for us. In the church, we, we see things happening. Even in the world, you see things happening. You might not be a Christian, but you know enough that this looks like stuff I've heard that is in the Bible. When that stuff happens, Jesus says, take heed to yourself and begin to look through the eyes of the Spirit and, the, and, the, and, and Scripture and prophecy, and then take heed, watch, and live a lifestyle of prayer. In other words, the, the antidote to the pressure that Lance just talked about that's coming, that pressure that yeah. we're all beginning to feel, the antidote to that is pressing in to the kingdom of God. Yes. Yes. It's pressing in towards the Lord. It's saying, I need to be ready. Mm -hmm. I need to have my heart ready. I need the Holy Spirit. I need God at work in my heart. That's the only way I'm going to survive, uh, whether it's before or during or after. It's, it's all about us having our hearts prepared. And that's an intimate relationship you're talking about yes. with the Creator. That's, um, that's what He wants more than anything. So that you wake up in the morning, you don't have that fear. And knowing that He's placed you in this time, uh, in all of eternity to, right. to, to to be positioned in a way that, okay, God, what are we doing today? Seriously, yeah. all of us sitting here, we, we have to get up and think every day, Lord, you know, what are you going to have me do today? Yeah. And it's so important that we do that. Let's kind of bring it, if we can, front and center. Rachel, I know you're going to love this. So um, Gog and Magog, Pastor Russell, and some of the things that are going on, the war in Israel, and Rachel, you mentioned things that you're interested in that are lining up militarily. Well, yeah, I mean, just the U.S. is sending all these, sh you know, ships, these Navy ships around the Mediterranean. I know they just sent like a nuclear submarine lance. So I'm curious your thoughts about yeah. that. And what are we really trying to say by doing that? Because it just seems like a lot of people are getting ready for something to happen. Right. I'll tell you what happened. What I, I, this when the Hamas attack happened, I was with my son at his wedding in Prague. I was in Europe. Wow. And he had just gotten married. And then, boom, a day later, the Hamas attack happened. I have news outlets in the United States. And that's the Hamas attack against Israel. Against Israel. Let me be clear about that. Yeah, against Israel, not, not Prague. So, so I'm over there, and I'm hearing news. People are calling me up saying what, what's happening in Europe and their response. So, um, and I had Annabelle with me, my dear wife, and she's an artist, and I thought, I'm not going to make this a, uh, a Lance obsessed about the end times day. This is about, she's with me. I said, honey, let's take a day or two for us. So I'm trying to be a good husband. <laughs> so I take her, well, all the places to take her, get this, I take her to the uh, some, some museum, and I'm looking at this thing, and it's an estate from the 1700s. It's huge. It's a governmental estate, which is now converted into a museum. I'm finding out that Hamas is right there in the Philistine territory. I'm looking at this as, a, a, as an end-time scenario, and I'm thinking about the geopolitical. And I listen to Jack Posobiec. Jack Posobiec's a Catholic conservative who's got a popular following on secular radio. I'm on secular radio, too. So I said, what did Jack say? He said, this isn't World War II. 
This is World War I. And he said, remember what was the spark of World War I? Was Archduke Ferdinand getting assassinated. Mm -hmm. And it catalyzed all the family relationships. I kid you not, I look down to see where am I with Annabelle. I'm in the residence of Archduke Ferdinand wow. while I'm preparing my wow. broadcast. Wow. He left that residence with his wife the day that the two of them were assassinated, which created a domino effect. I believe what the Lord was saying is, we should pray that this does not become World War I. So good, so good. Pastor Russell? Yeah, you know, I'm reminded of what Scripture says in both Old Testament and New Testament. Uh, that everything that can be shaken will be shaken to reveal that which can't be shaken. Right. And when the nations are shaking, what it reveals is things that are built on the solid rock. Mm -hmm. And scripture speaks about the church and the life of the believer mm -hmm. as being built on a rock that is higher than national conflict, than political opinions, than the popular vote, if we will build our lives on things that are unshakable, not only can we survive that which is coming, we can thrive when others fail. Mm -hmm. And so for me, you know, when these moments are breaking out all around us, it, it, it really functions as a check on our soul. What are we founded on? Yeah. Right. What is the foundation of our lives? If you are just rooted in whatever the popular opinion is of the day, you are like a ship tossed to and fro. Your yes is not yes, your no is not no. You're unstable in all of your ways. But when you are founded on something that is unchanging and unshakable, Jesus says, upon this rock, yes. I will build my church. Sure. The gates of hell will not prevail against it, which tells us this. The church is a force that is on the move. Yes. And in doing so, we are looking at the things that are happening around the world, and we are saying, could this be something that God could use by his own spirit to bring people into the saving knowledge of his son, Christ Jesus, and that. giving them that firm foundation as as well. The Church of Jesus Christ has an opportunity to be a bright, bold, unapologetic, and courageous voice because when the world is scared, what it needs is a courageous yes. church. And that's yes. what A.W. Tozer said, and this is our opportunity to show supernatural courage. Yeah. Oil in the dark days. Explain what that means. Yeah, that's in Matthew 25. Jesus tells the parable of ten virgins that are waiting for the bridegroom to come. And both of them go out to meet him. Both of them have their lamps. Both of them take oil out. But it says that for five of them, they didn't bring enough oil because it was longer and darker than they anticipated. Mm. And so at the end of the day, there's five. We're in five. the longer and darker. Yeah. Yeah. We're in the longer <laughs> and darker. Like well, there's five that were wise that brought extra oil. Yeah. Right. Oil yeah. In, that, in that imagery and that metaphor, that parable that Jesus talks about is intimacy with the Lord mm. that produces power of endurance. Yeah. And here's what's important for us to know. In the kingdom of God, there is no such thing as secondhand anointing. You can't borrow it from somebody else. You yes. can't ride on somebody else's relationship with God. You can't ride on somebody else's gifting or anointing. You need it for yourself. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a cautionary parable and an encouragement to us that as we begin to see things uh, progress, and they are progressing. I do agree. I think that there's this is not the end of the end. It's birth pings that are getting closer and closer together. This may end up leading to something like in Ezekiel 38 down the road. But what do we do right now? What do we do right now? The faith that Jesus gave to us, he said, what overcomes the world? It's our faith. Yes. Yeah. What is stronger than sin? It's grace. Where sin abounds, grace does much more abound. Mm -hmm. So as we begin to see sin abounding, darkness abounding, yeah. Isaiah 60 becomes our mandate. It's time to arise and shine for your light has come and the glory of the Lord will rise upon you. Yes. That's the mandate of the church. It's for us to go and get oil, have our lamps full, yes. to have our eyes set on Jesus, and to be about the kingdom business. Jesus is going to come when Jesus is going to come. Yeah, you know, uh, my husband and I have been reading through the New Testament, Pastor Russell, and we just are always astonished at how much belief is mentioned. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's an important word to have and to understand as a Christian. Talk about that. Yeah, you know, uh, in Revelation, the last book of the Bible, which is a book that is always talked about when things like this happen in the world around us, it's important that people understand that that is not the revelation of end times. It's yeah. not the revelation of you know, wars and rumors of war. It's the revelation of Jesus Christ, the beauty and the brilliance of the one that we worship. And, uh, you know, the Apostle John, who's the author of the book of Revelation, he says that we overcome by what? The blood of the Lamb 
and the word of our testimony. And I think it becomes super important for believers in this season to continue to tell themselves the story of not just why they believe, but what they believe, why they believe. Yes. Because out of your mouth, the tongue speaks and the power of life and yeah. death is there within it. So true. And so for me, it's like we've got to learn to tell ourselves the story of how many times God has been faithful before and why we should be sure. able to believe him again. That's why I love the Bible. It's a 100% track record. Mm -hmm. It's never been wrong. It never will be wrong. People today are obsessed with knowing the future. They're trying to consult psychics and tarot cards and Ouija boards because they want to know the future. If you want to know the future, you got to read the Bible because the Bible will introduce you to the one who created it before you were born. And so for me, it's like we've got to learn to be professional storytellers where we tell the story of the redeemed. Let the redeemed of the Lord tell their story. Yes. Let's tell the testimony of God and in doing so, build faith that will cause us to stand in that place of belief. Do not doubt in the darkness what God has revealed to you in the light. So good, so good. And we have to be faithful with what God has put in our hands. Yes. And some of you... Um, you say, well, you know, I don't really know or understand all of this. Well, that's why you're watching today. And that's why you're drawn to this because God has a plan and purpose for your life. There's a destiny that you have not walked in that even in your mother's womb, God put things on the inside of you that you haven't even discovered that he knows about. But as you connect to him, the one that created you, you're going to see those things realized in a way that you could not have imagined. So open up your heart, receive him into your heart and life today, and just know that uh, you've been born for such a time as this. And God wants to use you in a powerful way. Some of you have ideas, you have inventions, you have things that are going to be a great blessing in the world today. And uh, you haven't walked into that yet, but it's going to happen. Uh, we're out of time, but I want you to know again that you were born for such a time as this. God has chosen for you to live in this day, in this hour, because he has tremendous purpose for you. So as you see things happening, don't be shaken, for through Christ you have victory. And the Father is empowering you to be salt and light right now. Yes, there's darkness. We see terrible things happen. But as Jesus comes on the inside of you, there's going to be a light that shines from you that the world so desperately needs and wants. Well, if you're watching today, maybe you're struggling with uncertainty or you need the Lord to reveal his purpose in your life. Maybe you prayed that prayer earlier with Pastor Russell and you want to know, what do I do now? I'd love to send you a book entitled, Now What? It's in English and Spanish. And uh, that's why that toll-free number is on the screen. You can also go to, to, um, to daystar.com and click on prayer, send your prayer request in that way as well. But I want to thank all of my guests for joining me today. And for more from Lance, be sure to check him out online at lancewallnail.com. For the latest from Pastor Russell, you can go to thepursuitnw.com. And to stay up to date on all the Lord is doing through Lee's ministry, you can find out more at leecummings.com. They're all incredible men of God, and I know you'd be blessed by their resources. As always, let us know how Table Talk is touching your life. Leave us a comment on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or YouTube. We love hearing from you. Thank you so much for watching. I'm so excited about what your future holds. And uh, God has continued purpose for you. I don't care what you've been, where you've been, what mistakes you've made. Don't let the enemy beat you up. I'm telling you, come to Jesus just like you are. And he receives you. He's the one that does the work from the inside out. And I'm telling you, you do become a new creature in Christ Jesus. We love you. See you next time. Bye-bye for today.